Let's not forget about other indications. Uh, here are choices for bipolar depression that are generic. And if we didn't have lorazidone uh, in this table, I would yeah. be quite sad. It was a big deal when lorazidone got this approval actually in 2013 because you can see very different safety profile from the, the only two that were approved at that point for bipolar depression. That was a watershed moment in some way. It, it, really it was. was. So here is the case where I did pool together quetiapine IR and XR oh, mm -hmm. at the doses that are approved for bipolar depression. And look at the number needed to harm for somnolence. Yeah. For every three patients randomized to quetiapine, whatever kind it was, at whatever dose versus placebo, you would encounter one additional patient complaining about somnolence or sedation. Now this is a problem when you're treating someone who's depressed, you don't want to slow them down. Yeah. The number needed to treat to actually encounter response was a higher number, hmm. which means you will encounter sedation or somnolence more often than response. So for me, quetiapine was a non-starter. And with a lanspine fluoxetine combination, the concern over weight gain often made it a non-starter. Okay, I have a point here though. Somnolence is clearly dose dependent. Notice we said weight gain is not clearly dose dependent. That may come up in your future, in your near future when you're asked to push a button. But <laughs> somnolence is clearly dose dependent. The lowest dose ever studied with quetiapine for bipolar depression was 300 milligrams. I was in the room when this decision was made. They uh, had, uh, we did mania trials with quetiapine and the average effective dose was 589 milligrams. They didn't have a 589 milligram pill, they had a 600 milligram pill. When they went to do bipolar depression, they said, oh, we're gonna use our bipolar dose of 600 milligrams and you could hear us, the air sucked out of the room as we went, <gasps> that's too high. So they said, okay, we'll cut it in half, 300. Doesn't matter, won't work. Yeah. And of course, the Boulder One study showed it worked perfectly, but there were clearly dose dependent side effects. And so we didn't know the floor. Now, of course, we know quetiapine's approved at 150 milligrams for adjunct for MDD. So there is an antidepressant signal lower, but they just never studied it. And so it burdens it with more sedation. It, it that does. Maybe less at a lower. But the, the MDD. Uh, number looks very similar. It looks similar. Oh, yeah, well, so I, that, was a, to say, that was a good story. It, okay. Very sedating drug. Yes. And OFC uh, concerned about weight gain. Lorazidone's the sea of green for the most yeah. part. Yeah. And so I was quite pleased when it came out generically. And then we have two other drugs approved for bipolar depression that are not on this table that are also a sea of green. Yeah. And uh, those two, of course, are cariprazine and lumateperone. Very well tolerated. What about MDD? Well, here we are. Yep. Uh, Aripiprazole, OFC, and quetiapine extended release are the generic SGAs approved for uh, major depressive disorder. We, we have a couple of others that are branded, Brex, Piprazole, and, and Cariprazine. Right. They don't have any red in them, but these three choices have red in them. Red means I need to be careful here. Yes. So this is an instance where I would prefer to use a, a branded product yes. adjunctively in my patients with MDD because I want to avoid akathisia, I want to avoid weight gain, mm -hmm. and I want to avoid somnolence or sedation as best I can. Well, as we said too, the newest one, Lumateperone, just announced a very positive study uh, which also probably would look favorable in the side effect range. And notice that not all of the atypical antipsychotics have a bipolar depression or a unipolar depression indication. That gets to what I said earlier. They're not all antidepressants. They don't all seem to have a strong antidepressant signal. 